Alrighty, Sam, let's hope this time I'll be able to hear you clearer. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Oh, no, I can hear you very well. I was worried about myself, but I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Look, do... you, have, you, have, you have taken it to the climax now. Maleke leke. <laughs> In my language, we say you have taken it to Maleke Leke. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Hector, this, this, the story of your life. I always say that the best way to teach career guidance is to tell the story. Okay, thank you. You have done it so well, and, and in actual fact, it doesn't look like anything of your development happened by mistake. That's why I feel very strongly that there was a script written and hidden somewhere and the upper hand was just controlling it. Because, because if you think of it, the, 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 the number one what I picked up from what you have said with us is persistence, focus, determination, passion, hard work. But then also God was putting you in the right places. These great people that you came to contact with were attracted to you by the energy that you were you are you are emitting. Yeah, and I think I yes, think I was radiating. I was radiating yes, something about me. Yeah. I think it's very important for people to take a lesson from your story in that you need to emit positivity for you to be able to attract positivity. Yes, and also that you know a, a firm decision mm. and focus create that creates that magnet that attracts the resources that you need to help you to go to the next level. Uh, look, in hindsight, it was after I made a quality, firm decision that I'm quitting radio to go into motivational speaking. Then, boom, suddenly, people like David Mulapo are appearing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know what uh, it's called in psychology, that, uh, that, that uh, phenomenon where when you start thinking, Ooh, I want to buy myself a yellow car. Mm. And suddenly you start seeing yellow cars mm. all around you every mm. day. They you say know? that you tell your subconscious mind and it fetches it for you. The universe delivers. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, and I think this is exactly what was happening. With um, Every time I would make a decision that, okay, this is what I want to do. Then, boom, I would attract mm. resources around mm. that. Mm. And there I was with Dr. Malapo and then... Uh, Dr. Tibani, and then uh, actually we, they, they were working together at that time at the Aken Foundation and Abna Mariri. Mm. And then, then mm. I was surrounded oh, by yes. the great ones. Wow. Yeah. And then Leah Usmamiki Mulapo, a, a, a great speaker in her own right, yes. who also advised me to say, Hector, read, read. Mm. Same advice I got when I got into radio. I get the same advice when I got into the field of motivational speaking. Mm. So I think to go into radio, I read enough to be on radio, and remember, my aim for re reading for radio was to be eloquent, mm. not to know as such, but mm. to be eloquent. Not mm. as reading to be eloquent. <laughs> but now, <laughs> now I'm now I'm here uh, again into a field where now you have to feed people with knowledge and uh, and, and, and and methods and uh, uh, tricks and tips and advice. Now you've got to know more mm. than them. Mm. You know, Hector. So, let's let's take. The, the business of motivational speaking, let's talk about it as if we are advising somebody there who has all these uh, uh, characteristics that you have demonstrated and they want to join you in this industry. And also I want us to talk a little bit about the, the business of motivational speaking as you run it now. Uh, because you are, you are, I don't look at you now. You are an entrepreneur now and you are, your product offering is motivational speaking. What is motivational speaking and what does it take to run a motivational outfit, motivational speaking outfit? Okay, I, I think uh, my, my definition, uh, Prasem, motivational speaking would be, um, I'm, I'm looking for words. Yes. I've, I've never been asked that way. You know, yes. I just, I, I do it, but I've never really been put in a position. Where you have to, def <laughs> where to define it and describe it. <laughs> where, 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 where I have to uh, uh, define it. Yes. But, but, but I think that it is, remember, in psychology, you have people who have internal locus of control. Yes. You know, people like me, 
self-motivated, the motivation comes from inside. Yes. And then you do have those with external uh, locus of control. Mm. You know, they need to be stimulated from uh, without or from outside. So this is, uh, so motivational speaking is when you offer people stimulation mm. from outside to do something. And not necessarily putting anything in them, but helping them to see to, to, to find already what is already inside them. So it's like so, a it's like a booster. It's a booster. Yeah. You know, somebody or they already have this thing. So you, your task as a motivator is to help them to see what they already have inside and uh, encourage them, goad them to uh, uh, take it out and mm. just do it. Mm. And especially uh, the, the the majority of the people who don't have that internal locus of um, of control because it's a lot of people you know who don't really see themselves as being able to can do some things until somebody comes and tells them do you know that you as you are here have so many gifts uh, you have this potential in you and uh, you can be able to do one two three with the gifts that you have with the potential that you have and 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 so that is the role of a motivator to mm. help people to be able to discover what is already there in them. We don't put anything in them. You mm. help them. You become an external, external, uh, external stimuli. You know that, um, born. You can be. You sit at there. Can be able to do blah blah blah. One two three. In an environment like where we are right now, under which we are speaking, uh, COVID lockdown. Um, and why I was, I'm doing this lockdown lunchtime motivation is for me to help to help people to say no 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 no. Yes, we see the lockdown. And the, and, and, and the COVID-19, but this doesn't cancel your purpose and this doesn't um, uh, at all uh, uh, neutralize your potential. No, you can still be able to do a lot and don't lose hope. You see, mm. that's the role of motivation, mm. to give people hope. Yeah. Give so people it's, hope. It's, it's, it's almost, uh, it almost follows the concept of positive psychology. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm. that, that, it, that, it, actually, it's exactly that. Yeah. It is exactly it, 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 it is exactly that, and that is why when a lot of people ask me, uh, which is answers you, uh, your second question of what does it take uh, mm. uh, 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 for one to do that. I remember one friend, uh, one of my colleagues, when I left Radio Bob to tell him that I was going to be to do motivational speaking, and his question was. Okay, what are you going to tell people? Where in the heck? What stories can you tell them? <laughs> what are you going to have? I mean, you are a clown and a funny DJ and uh, entertainer. Now you want to motivate people. What, what are you going to tell people? <laughs> so, <laughs> what does it take to be a motivational speaker? And now, you just spoke about uh, 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 positive psychology right there. Yeah. That actually, Motivational speaking is psychology. Yes. So, uh, it's, it's important to study uh, psychology. Uh, remember, I told you I studied public administration, which yes. had an element of industrial uh, psychology. Yes. And even continued a little bit with the UNISA, you know, some uh, certificated courses around psychology that I did just to beef up my content, mm. you know. But what, what does it take? Number one, it takes because uh, I always like starting it here, and this applies across the board with all careers. Find it inside you, or is this what you are passionate to do about? Yes. Is this what you are called to do? Yeah. Do you look at people and feel compassion and say, hey, I wish I could help motivate this person. I see this person is down. Mm. And how do I see that with me when I look back? go walking down memory lane, I noticed that, oh, me doing that midday madness and encouraging people on air, uh, using content, they're miles similar. Oh, so this thing has just always there, been there in me. And when a listener calls in and say, hey, man, you know, I'm struggling with my studies or I'm struggling with this. And, and naturally, I would just be able to tell them things. And I remember people would say, but Hector, how do you know these things? <laughs> so find it in you first. Mm. You don't go to any institution to try and be something. Mm. You go to an institution to develop that which you have discovered in you already. Yeah. You know, the other way of putting it, Prasem, when I coach especially young people, I say, you don't go to a university to try and be a doctor. Mm. You first discover the doctor in you. Yeah. And after discovering this doctor, you go to the varsity and say, help me, guys. I'm here to do you a favor. I would yeah. like you to help me. 
bring out the doctor in me. I'm a doctor, but I'm not qualified yet. Yes. So I'm giving you an opportunity for the next seven years to bring out the doctor in me. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful way of putting it. So, so that so, speaks to the fact that it's important to identify your talent. But, but talent alone, but talent yeah. alone, it's not enough. Actually, talent is number two in my approach. Yes. The best is the passion, the, the calling, uh, the, you know, the inclination. What, what the, there will be this thing when you feel for it. You know, let's say, uh, because you know why I don't want to go first to talent? Yes. If, it, it's like me when I wanted to sing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have talent but you had passion <laughs> so I think the first thing is check the passion mm. Eh? Mm. check the co- and actually that's why I, I, I keep on running away from the word passion mm. it's, it's, it's the calling passion, man. it's the calling mm. find, is there anything in you and, and if you take a trip down memory lane as a young person Mm. As a person, as, a, as an any human being, mm. you'll check what are the kind of things that attracted you when you grew up. Mm. You know what? You know, I look at the songs that I used to love a lot, and mm. that, that, that somehow got caught my attention. We G's hold on to your dream, the greatest love of all. Um, Whitney Houston and George Benson, and well, I prefer the George Benson version. Yes, and and and, I, and, and these songs were they with the words. We just somehow capture my attention. Only now do I realize, oh, that's why I loved Hold On To Your Dreams by Ouija. That's why I loved the Whitney Houston. The lyrics were speaking to what I was to do later in life. Mm. So I noticed that, okay, motivating people is a thing that I love doing. And mm. then, I, I go, it's like, for somebody who wants to be a medical doctor, yes. when you, they would tell you that even when they were young, when they saw a picture of a doctor, there was something skill is jumping in them. Yeah. Or when they saw somebody injured, they felt like they want to do something and they feel like, but they're not qualified to do this, but they feel like, I wish I could help this person, you know, for you know, mm. and to be there strong, you know, mm. in them. So mm. not this thing. Was so like, that's something like, like internal drive. That to do what? Internal drive. Oh, yes. This, 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 this internal, this internal drive. Yes. And, 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 you know, just like some of the young stars of glory, these comedians, they're doing it from high school. They've yes. been making us laugh from in the classroom. Yes. I remember there were young people who would be around me, but I said, could mm. I, I, I reflect on my youth? And I find that, I remember one lady, Faith, there would be lunch, Richard Porter, and I said, they never had, you know, thanks for this conversation. I can't remember the words I was saying, but these people say, <laughs> thank you for the conversation. And now I realize, oh, this thing of encouraging and talking and to people has just been part of me and that I was not even aware of it. So mm. that's the thing that I'm trying to find each person to say, what does it take to be a motivator? Mm. It takes you discovering the motivator first in you. Do you have this strong drive, this strong pull inside that says, I, I want to motivate people? And then number two, do you have the ability, the talent, mm. the speaking talent? Because it requires you to speak to people. Yes. And, of course, we have different personalities. There would be those who are very expressive, like me, and jumping around. And, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if I was in the preaching space, I would be like your T.T. Jakes. Uh-huh. 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 Thing, you know? Then you'll have people who are a bit more reserved in their approach, very reserved, you know. And, 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 and I haven't seen you live <laughs> are you, <aware? laughs> you haven't seen me live <laughs> <laughs> you strike me as a guy who's very calm in your approach you be dancing yeah. and holding tail spinning on your head in the in front of the audience like i would i would, I would, I would, I would, I would do yeah but, no no we, <laughs> t- we would definitely we may achieve the same impact but we may have made we may make the same impact but there's a different style and different approach uh-huh. I, I will. Then, you will laugh. I will crack a joke. You will laugh, and uh, uh, you will have to have been attentive to get the joke. <laughs> you see what I'm so, the, and then the, that comes with the the, the the part of you for discovering a person discovering themselves. Okay, do I have the gift to mm. do this? The talent, mm. uh, the speaking talent, and the, and it doesn't have to be a, a, an expressive one like um, a, a hector or some or a person like that. Mm. It, it just the ability, basic ability to string words together. You know, the gift of the game. Mm. You know, to be able to to for, for, for to, to to have impact. You know, yes. to string that 
matters together that makes impact. So what does it take to be a speaker? That calling first. And that's, that, that's why I said, even an engineer, you need to be called <laughs> to be yeah. an engineer. It applies to any uh, uh, profession. And then you have the gift for it. You know, somebody who's called to be an engineer, they will discover that they truly know maths very much. You yes. know, but it's, it's packaged. It's part of their package when they were born. And then... Um, uh, what else does it take? Um, oh, yes. And then when it comes to academia, yes. because um, you need to add knowledge now, yes. I would say definitely psychology, studying yes. psychology. Yes, I do know a lot of speakers who haven't studied psychology, but uh, let's say they studied other courses. You know, could have been a guy who was in finance. You yes. know, I have a, my late friend, Andrew Sik, who was in finance, you know, was yes. working for the Left Bank and FNB. But you know what? He decided later, uh, or discovered later, that no, 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 I was on the wrong path. My path is here to motivate people. And he simply switched uh, path and then went into motivational speaking. But you know what I like is that nothing is wasted in life. Mm. In that, now, he was a speaker with a very strong background in finance, and he would also use that as yes. part of his ammunition, as part of his content. You know, using concepts and models that he learned in the field that he used to be uh, in. So any field can take you there. Dr. John Tiwani started as a medical doctor, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and changed careers later to go into motivational speaking. And mm -hmm. then, but I would say that the knowledge of psychology, whether you studied formal or informal, because I, you know, I read a lot of psychology books and I got exposed to all this uh, McGregor's theory, you know, theory, you know, stick and carrot theory, you know, so yeah. I know all of those because I noticed that this thing is, has got a strong element of uh, psychology. I even took that talk course with uh, UNISA, uh, you know, industrial psychology further, you know, uh, over and above what I learned at TNT. So, but I would advise people that, you know what, study psychology because uh, motivation and psychology, look, um, they go together. But apart mm. from that, mm. a lot of reading, Brasem, because remember, when you're working as a motivational speaker, mm. it's not about, I try to help a lot of guys around this. Remember, it's not about how nice words that you say and stringing a few quotations together. And, uh, and uh, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, no, <laughs> it's about helping, giving people solutions. Mm. Mm. And you cannot give solutions when you are not w w w widely, widely read, widely mm. read, yeah, mm. widely read. Mm. You need to research, you know, if you're good, uh, there will be. So it's, uh, a, it's a, so it's a very demanding uh, profession, so to say. Very demanding. You know, some people just think, oh, it's just an hour. You go there and you just speak for one hour and then you get a fat paycheck and you leave. And no. What goes into that hour? What mm. goes into that hour? First, you need to know what is the, uh, what is the pain. Um, what, where is the itch mm. <laughs> you know, of your client, mm. Mm. Of, of, of the people that you are going to speak to? If you are going to a community, unemployment, what kind of talk can you do that will help open people's minds to help them? Maybe create employment for themselves or how to go and ap apply for jobs. You need to be well read around that subject. If a company says we have a problem with productivity, people are coming to work late, present, believe it or not, you will have to find a model and a way to talk to people about late coming without, because you can just stand in front of people and say, guys, I hear that you're coming late. Come to work on time. That's it. <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> that will not work. <laughs> but, but now you need to go into the, 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 the psychology of why is it that these people are coming to work on time? Mm. The, the mm. psychiatry issue here. Mm. And then you... Then so you address it in a motivation way that they want to do something about it. Ah, that they want to do something about it. In that, and, but you can even show them why. You know, I've been to a lot of places where I would address uh, issues for, like, like uh, for example, the issue of uh, uh, of late coming. Mm. And in such a way that, but Ari, yeah, right, today you just showed me, worry. Hey, my bra. <laughs> you told me in a nice way and motivating way. Yeah, uh, Hector, I want you... Yeah, sorry for interrupting you because I'm no checking time. I want no you to sum up with... Now you have shared with the people on the product of motivation. 
I want you to close uh, and also I want you to be able to give people your contact details because that's the whole idea of the Commerce Business Connect. People must be inspired, but also they must be able to follow after you and engage with you for whatever reasons. I want you to sum up on now that you are able to deliver this product and you are the product yourself and you stand in front of your product, but there is an enterprise behind you. So what is the okay. mechanism, what is the infrastructure that you have to put in place to be able to deliver a motivational solutions because you can't just be a person? And then lastly, of course, as I say, as you close up, to how do people get a hold of you? Social media platform where you are in, your direct line they can call and the email addresses because we really want people to come and talk to you about this business. That either they want to be like you or they want you to come and motivate them. Okay. Just like any other business, uh, Prasem, you need to register your business, give mm. it a name. I choose mine, I call it the motivation company because I'm, I wanted to own the space, you know, to say this is where you get motivation. It's a hub of yes. motivation. So that's yes. why my company is called the motivation company. And then number two, after registering uh, the company, just like any other company, you need to market uh, your company. So um, at, just like, and, and if you remember, some businesses start with as one man shows. You know, yeah. you are your own uh, PA, you are your own <laughs> uh, marketer, you are your own administrator, you are doing all these things, you know. Yeah. But then as a business grows, then you will have your office uh, where clients can come and meet with you. Although business is changing, you know, technology is changing business, that you can run your business even just from a phone. Yes. Um, that, that could be your office. So you will have to find a model that will work very well for you. Now, you will uh, have um, your company, uh, a, a, a stage name like Hector Motivator, whatever you want to call yourself. Then you have to take yourself out there and you follow the normal uh, methods of uh, marketing yourself. And it depends on how wild and crazy you are. You'll di use different uh, techniques and, and, and tips, uh, again, uh, approaches, you know, into the market, how to grab people's attention. You know, mm. um, whether you want to be controversial or it's because of some deep things that you always say. So you go out there and you market yourself using traditional media. It could be television. Uh, and, and you know what you do? You avail yourself to uh, television channels. You can write a piece maybe on how to overcome stress during this um COVID times, then television invites you, you are speaking there, and then boom, the next thing, companies see you, and then they invite you, or you could be interviewed like you are interviewing me right now, or uh, social media, just posting your thoughts, the three mm. steps on how to do this, five steps on how to do this, you know, or just one-liners, you know, to get try and get people's attention, or also can get an agent, you know, in our space as motivational speakers, uh, it helps to get somebody who can represent you, go out there, because some companies find it easier to uh, say, you know what, we don't want to source a speaker for ourselves. Uh, there's a company that sources speakers, and then mm. they go to that company, and if you are listed with one of those agents, it becomes easier for them to get you jobs. And then also, what do you talk about? Very important that you know your content, because we talk about different things as motivational speakers, whether you're talking finance, or you're talking about personal development, you're talking teamwork, you're talking about technology and the fourth industrial revolution, you need to be clear about what is it that you are addressing as a speaker because you cannot talk about everything. There are some things that you know that mm -hmm. are not your area. Some people talk about health issues, you know, that they're specialists in health. They motivate you around how to eat healthy and exercise and the area of motivation. So you need to be clear about your topics. Then when you're clear about your topics, something that personally, and I know I'm very weak in that area, but I'm working on it, then um, release a lot of products around that. Mm. A book, mm. uh, manual, you know, mm. uh, resources, you know, mm. around your, to your, 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 your topics. Mm. And when you have a book out there, very important. I just released mine, The Hector Experience. Yes. I'm telling my story, and which is a very good start for anybody who wants to start writing a book. The first topic or the first subject that you will master is yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody... Can yeah. master that subject. Yeah. Call to your call to you. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you can start with that. He was telling us your story. I mean, the old stuff, by the way, that I told you today is in my book, The Hector Experience. Wow. All of, <laughs> they are all in there. Yeah. You know, plus and some more. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's more in the book. You know. Yeah. And then when you have books and all that, it makes it easier for mm. yourself or your agent uh, uh, to market you. 
Then you need to know the pricing. Hey, with that one, it's a very private, personal matter mm. for a lot of speakers mm. in that it's not a regulated space. Yes. So you charge according to what you believe you are worth, mm. given maybe the, what you've gone through, your research, your studies, your qualifications, hey, your, um, what, uh, what you call the thing in coaching, that you are accredited, you yes. know, you're an accredited yes. coach. So whatever it is that you put into your billing structure, or you know, given all these factors, I will say I am worth, boom, uh, mm. this much. But you can find that very easy. When, if you want to, uh, to find out fees, I always tell people, call a, a, a speaking agent, pretend to be a client, yes. and uh, look at three guys that want to find out how much they charge and say, okay, I would like to have Hector or Billy Silicon or Brasem or whatever. And then they give you the, 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 their quotations, and then boom, you faint, and then you can come back up, and then... <laughs> then you determine your own fee. <laughs> <laughs> you re- that's the research. That, that's part of your research, yes. okay? How do I charge you when it comes to these things? You know, because yes. I remember my first time when I did my first ever talk at ESCOM in 1990, what was it, 98 or something like that. Uh, and and, and w- when I did that talk, I didn't know how much to charge them. So I asked them, how much does Mulapo charge you? And they told me. <laughs> then I was like, okay, I'm just starting, so I'll do half of what Mulapo does, okay? <laughs> You know, yeah, but you run it professionally, like a business. You need to market it all the time, and mm. you know your social mm. media presence. And by the way, on social media, I am Hector Motivator, and that's how you can get me. Just, just Hector Motivator, my website, yes. or Hector uh, Motivator on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Hector Motivator, even on LinkedIn. Mm. And very important that I wish we could one day talk about branding. Be yes. consistent. I found people that have different names on different platforms. Mm. On Facebook is Hex. On Twitter is Hectizo. <laughs> on Instagram is Hector Lala. It's like, hey man, who are you? It's confusing. <laughs> you know? You're confusing. Or more like Hector underscore this, hey, Hector hyphen this, Hector across this. Who are you? Mm. So I make sure that you have one name across mm. all. I, I see all. you even went as far as adopting colors. Yeah? Aha, that, that's why I'm saying that branding is a, maybe for, for our next interview, yes. we can just address, address branding. Yes. And, and, I, I think that, that's, that's crucial. That's, that's crucial. Okay. And, and, uh, and if they were to call your office directly, what number do they use? Um, it's 082-060-9888. 082 Or they can check my listing on... Uh, my agent is Speakers Inc. They will find my information there. Yes. Speakers Inc. Speakers uh, Inc. Oh yes, Speakers Inc. And yeah. and I notice Hector Inc. that uh, I've noticed that our our Commerce at Lab Radio Africa is uh, is 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 got quite a number of listeners in the US and in Ireland. So do you mind repeating your number and using the international code, please, for South Africa? Oh, plus twenty seven eight two. Zero six zero nine triple eight plus twenty seven eight two zero six zero nine triple eight or um, better uh, on, on on social media Hector Motivator. You can just inbox me, then yes. we take it from there. Yeah. yeah, because we, I'm sure your 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 story applies across the globe. Oh yes, it does yeah. well, for sure. Yeah. And then my book will be online uh, very soon. Yes. be able to put my book online where people can just uh, buy and download um, uh, online. And the title of the book again? The Hector Experience. The Hector the Experience. The Hector Experience. Experience. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much, Hector. It is, it is, it's been beautiful. Uh, I've, had, I've listened to you so many times, but I think I can listen to you forever. So, so the, 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 the boy from Mariri has really arrived, and I know you are still <laughs> happening. Thank you very much for the, for the time you spend with me. I really look forward to the next time when we will look into other subjects, like the branding that you spoke about and uh, many other related topics. I, I, I really appreciate your, your, your... Last remarks from you? 
No, I'm just saying that uh, we shouldn't stop um, uh, exploring and pioneering. I'm working on my next, because uh, remember, I kept on telling you that I, and then I started this. Then I realized that, no, I need to start something. So I'm working on something, and it has to do with radio, uh, by the way. Wow. You know, so radio is, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, once you have that radio bug, uh, yes. born, it never leaves you. So uh, we're working on something uh, for radio because yes. it's still part of me. I love radio. Beautiful. We look forward yeah. to hear about it. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Hector, the motivator, Matave, uh, talking to us. We really have learned a lot from him. I'm Sam Zima, the CEO and the executive business coach at Comesa GOC International PTY Limited. That was the Comesa Club Radio Africa presenting to you the motivational speaker, Mr. Hector, the motivator, Matave. Goodbye.